the last two episodes, we've been to two towns that Jesus had cursed, Chorazin and Bethsaida. But there is a third town, the town which was the center of Jesus' ministry in Galilee, the town where Peter's mother-in-law lived, the town of Capernaum. Located on the northwest side of the Lake of Galilee, the ruins of Capernaum are divided into two sites, the Franciscan and the Greek Orthodox. Unlike Jerusalem and other touristy ancient places in Israel, Capernaum seems to be untouched, still in its raw form. Just by walking here and looking at the lake, the hills, the mountains, we felt connected to its history. It is as if we could almost see Jesus walking on these shores, looking at the same hills. It's so serene and quiet. It's the perfect place to bring a Bible and just read in the morning. And besides the breathtaking nature, Capernaum has fascinating ruins. A fourth century synagogue built on top of the original one where Jesus taught, a house which is believed to be the house of Simon Peter the Apostle, the ruins of the old city, and much more. So join us in this episode as we explore this fascinating place. When Sergio and I started to date, this is the first place he took me to. And we walked here. It was beautiful. And uh, I loved it. Capernaum is divided into two parts, with an entrance point. This behind me is the Israeli National Park of Capernaum. This is the meeting point for tourists. They build a nice park with benches, restrooms and information center where tourists can come, either by boat or by car, and start their journey and exploration of the ancient ruins of Capernaum right from here. But the ancient town of Capernaum is divided into two parts, the Franciscan and the Greek Orthodox. They purchased the land back in 1908. Franciscans owned two thirds of the ancient ruins and the Greek Orthodox owned the rest of the land. We start our journey at the Franciscan site where archeologists discovered the ancient synagogue and the house of Apostle Peter. Capernaum goes pretty far back. There are ruins that date to the times before Abraham. However, it wasn't until the 4th century BC that it was expanded. And later, the Romans built its streets in straight lines like we see in other Roman cities, parallel to the main Roman imperial highway, which ran by the shore of the Sea of Galilee. By the 5th century, this place became pretty big. About 1,500 people lived here and they had a beautiful synagogue. And today, from the ruins, what we see is actually only third of what used to be here. I'm standing by the 4th century synagogue that is built on top of the synagogue where Jesus taught. 
He did a lot of miracles here. He healed the centurion's servant. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. He healed the man possessed with demons. One of Rhoda's favorite passages comes from this place. When many of the followers of Jesus find his teachings hard to accept and they leave him, Jesus turns to his disciples and he asks, are you going to leave me too? And Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. visitor who comes here is told that this is the house of Peter. How do we know for sure? We know that this was a famous fishing village. We know that it was a central place. We know Jesus came and preached here from the Gospels. But how do we know this is the exact place of Peter's house in fact? When they started excavating this place, they actually found walls that belonged to the first century, to the times of Jesus. And they also found that these walls have been turned into a church. So it was a house that was turned into a church later. Now during the excavations, they found hundreds of graffitis on the walls dedicated to the Lord. And some even say they found the name of Peter as well. So based on all these findings and all this information, we come to the conclusion that this is the house of Peter. So when the Franciscans bought this property, they wanted to continue the tradition of converting Peter's house into a church, building into a bigger church and a bigger church. They said, we're going to build a church here where the house of Peter was. But how do you do it without destroying the ruins? Well, it's actually a pretty cool construction. It's a hanging building on the pillars on the top, and it's also an octagonal church that you can walk inside of it and then look down into the house of Peter from a glass in the middle of the church. So this section belongs to the Greek Orthodox Church. What's interesting about it is that they've got this eight dunams of land that has not been excavated. All these are untouched ruins from the times of Jesus are still to be excavated. I wonder if we can go to the church and ask anybody if we can get into the field and see the ruins. Speaking to the Orthodox priest, he'll explain to us why they didn't excavate the ruins here. He said they didn't excavate them because they want to keep this site a church and they don't want to keep it humble, they want to keep it uh, more conservative, they want to keep it for prayer and not the public tourist place. So it does make sense in what he's saying, we respect that, um, but man, too bad, I wish we could just go there and see what's here. He said the houses are the same as on the other side, but I'm sure there's some treasure buried here to be excavated. On our first date, we walked from the park to here because it is so close. It's just a minute away of walk. And uh, from the souvenir shop here, Sergio bought me a ring on the first day. A bit quick, wouldn't you think? I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> They're just trying to catch dinner. It's not working. I don't think they like me. You do for me. 
<laughs> so behind the church, you got this nice location where you can sit on the bench, read your Bible, look at the lake. And here's a tip that you won't find on any other channel. This is a great place for swimming. Uninhabited beach, perfect clean water. Let's go and take a dive. Rules are only a recommendation for Sergio. 